So my name is Kirsten and I'm 31 years old. I come from a family of four children and I have a very loving and supportive family. Uh, we're all based in Hobart and I grew up here. For the last few years I've been working in foreign aid, um, which has been absolutely fantastic. I have been so fortunate with the roles that I've had. Um, I've been able to travel to developing countries and work with really small grassroots organisations. At the start of 2015, I came back to Australia for a break. Uh, I was within two or three weeks of leaving again for another role. So I'd packed up my house, I'd left my job here, and I was getting my pre-departure medical check done. And I mentioned to my doctor that I'd had some worrying symptoms while I was away last, and he suggested that we get those followed up. So when I saw the specialist, he didn't think it would be anything major because I was young, I was fit, I was healthy, I'd had a great lifestyle. Uh, didn't smoke, I'd been very careful with alcohol, didn't take drugs, and I had no family history of anything particularly worrying. Uh, however, when I woke up from the colonoscopy, uh, I was told that I had cancer, and that changed my life. For the first few weeks after my diagnosis, my life was a bit of a roller coaster of emotions. Um, everything stopped. I couldn't, I had to give up my job overseas. I had, was homeless. I had already packed up my house as I mentioned. So I moved in with my mother and uh, spent the first few weeks going from doctor surgery to doctor surgery with all the specialist appointments and medical appointments and scans and additional colonoscopies to, to form a, a full diagnosis. After all of uh, the initial medical investigations, I was diagnosed with stage three bowel cancer and this was quite surprising to me because I had no idea that there was cancer in my body apart from the minor symptoms that I'd experienced overseas. You know, I was still very fit and healthy and I just did not expect to have such a large tumour in my body. I certainly had the impression that bowel cancer was something that only affected older people. We have a bowel screening program in Australia for recommended for people over the age of 50 and so I certainly didn't think that bowel cancer would be something that would affect somebody so young um, and it was you know my diagnosis that taught me that unfortunately cancer doesn't discriminate. In terms of treatment it's been a very long year for me so far. I've had three major surgeries, uh, one minor surgery and I underwent six weeks of chemo and radiation before the surgeries and now post-surgery, I'm on a six-month regimen of intravenous chemo through a port in my chest. It's been a really long struggle with this treatment because a lot of the time it's painful. I'm left with crippling fatigue. Uh, the side effects of the chemo are pretty devastating. Um, one of the major ones is peripheral neuropathy, so my hands and feet are permanently tingly from nerve damage now caused by the chemo. Uh, and I can't go near anything cold while I'm having treatment because of those symptoms. And as I say, the, the general the fatigue is just, it's soul crushing at times. I've also had a lot of nausea from my treatment. Um, which has is managed pretty well with anti-nausea medication but you know can be a little bit um, of a showstopper for me at times it, it does affect my day-to-day -day living i've been very lucky though not to lose my hair through treatment it has thinned out quite considerably but by keeping it short it's hard to notice and i think that makes a big difference in the way that i feel about myself because a lot of people associate the loss of hair with somebody that has cancer and because I haven't lost my hair, I don't necessarily look like a sick person. One of the hardest things about the treatments that I've undergone so far is the not knowing what the end point was going to be. Initially, I was told it would be about six months of the various treatments and by the time I got to that, the end of that six months, I found out it was going to be another six months with the additional chemotherapy at the end. And I found this really devastating because I felt like I was running a marathon and I'd put everything into getting to the end of that first six months and thought I could see the finishing line in front of me, only to be told that that finishing line was on the other side of a really big hill that I now had to get across before I was at the end of my journey. And 
it's really hard when you're going through these treatments to to keep going because you're pouring everything into getting through only you know to have to keep digging deeper each day to go back for more i've also had some great support from my family and friends they've been really great through this process but i think pretty early on i recognized that the support that i was getting from them wasn't going to be enough for me and so one of the first things i did was to seek out a psychologist to help discuss the process and the, the emotions and feelings that went with having cancer there's only so much that you can talk to your family and friends about um, they don't want to talk about some of the really bad things though because you know they're gunning for you they want you to be positive and they want you to beat the cancer and to get through your treatment in one piece and it can be really hard to have conversations about preparing yourself for you know the possibility of death and facing your own mortality with your family and friends that are trying to stay positive for you so that was a really important step for me um, in addition to a psychologist i also sought out some support groups so the cancer council tasmania has been really great in providing avenues for that support through face-to-face -face support groups and art therapy classes which i've been doing and that's been really great for me to be able to explore some of those both the dark side and the the, the bad emotions as well as the celebrating the positive things that have that have, have happened along the way i've also um, enjoyed talking to people through online support groups as well. They're a wealth of knowledge and experience and is a, it's a great way to connect you with other people going through the same thing all over the country. The cancer will have long-term impacts on me as well as the acute impacts from treatment. So one of the things that I'm suffering from at the moment is chem what they call chemo brain. To me, it feels like trying to think through fog sometimes and I'm very forgetful. Um, and um, yeah, general, uh, I don't know what I was gonna say, <laughs> I've forgotten. Um, I often forget where I put things and most of the time I, can, I will forget conversations that I've had with people and need reminding. And you know, that can be really tricky in terms of getting through your day to day when you have such significant memory problems. The other long-term effects include impacts to my fertility and that's a big one for me. I was, you know, I'm young and I was in a committed relationship and there was the possibility of having children in the future for us but unfortunately now that's not really a, an opportunity for me because of the impacts of the surgery and the radiation on my internal organs. And also now the chemo uh, may have affected the function of my ovaries as well. I've been really lucky with my medical team throughout the course of my treatment. I have every confidence in my medical specialists. Um, and I found that the relationship with my GP has been particularly important because my GP is the conduit between all of the specialists. And it's been uh, great that they've really followed up with me. Um, having that, that good relationship with my GP has really helped me throughout this process. Each of my medical specialists is focused on one area of treatment, but my GP has been really important in pulling all of that together and also recommending to me other avenues to plug in some of those gaps, whether it was for psychological care or additional um, medical treatments outside of what my medical specialists could provide. Another key message is to take control of your treatment plan. I understand that doctors are medically trained and, you know, they in a lot of cases are the experts, but they don't necessarily understand some of the impacts that their decisions that might be a one size fits all would have on an individual that has cancer. And so for me, that was really important to negotiate my surgery plan with the doctor to make sure that whilst I was getting the best care possible and increasing my chances of survival, I was also taking into consideration the impacts that that would have long term on me. I think it's also very important for doctors uh, to be flexible in working with patients, to involve them in the decision making process because it's their body and they're the ones that have to cope with the outcomes and the impacts. So involving them in the process rather than just telling them how things are going to be, I think is really important. 
When considering treatment plans for young patients, I think it's really important for doctors to be mindful of the long-term impacts that cancer and the treatment plan can have. So things like fertility and sexual function, relationship impacts, psychological impacts, work impacts and body image, these are really important things to consider and it's important to be open with your patients about these things. I think it takes a lot for a young person to go to the doctor, so I think it would be great if GPs really listened to young people and took them seriously. Um, you know, I've heard anecdotally a lot of the time that young people find that they're turned away from the doctor um, if they've got vague symptoms, but it's really important to, to develop a good relationship with your patients and to follow up uh, and do a thorough history. Being really careful of how much to tell your patient and when I think is really important. I've certainly experienced my medical specialists holding back information so as not to overwhelm me, but I'm the kind of person that uh, I need to know everything up front in order to help myself prepare for what's about to happen. So not having all the information up front I found particularly difficult. So I think it's really important to find that right balance um, and that comes from understanding the kind of person that your patient is. I strongly encourage GPs to refer their patients to the Cancer Council Tasmania because the Cancer Council has such a wealth of knowledge and support that's available to young people, to anyone really with cancer. I'm really lucky in that things are looking positive for me. I'm due to finish my treatment shortly and if I get clear scans at the end of all of this, then hopefully that means that I'll be in remission. Um, and that is such a wonderful feeling after such a long, hard year of treatment. And it's, it's really um, taught me to live in the present and to appreciate life and to not let cancer hold me back. I have a whole life out there yet to live and I'm really looking forward to getting back to it. Mm -hmm.